The Asia League ice hockey is set to return in September for the first time in almost three years after being suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Alongside five teams from Japan, Anyang Hala from South Korea will return to compete for the championship title. Leading the team is head coach Jim Peck, the legendary pioneer in the sport. The Canadian was the first player of Korean descent to play in the NHL in North America. And he was also the head coach of the South Korean men's national team until earlier this year. I'm delighted to say that he joins us via video call for Touch Basin Seoul now. Coach Peck, hello. It's uh, an honor to have you back on the show. Well, thanks for having me back. I'm, I'm real honored to to be able to be on your show here. Uh, yeah, I say it's great to have you back because you were on the show almost five years ago now before my time on the show. Uh, back then, you were the head coach of the South Korean national team just before the PyeongChang Winter Olympics. A lot of time has passed since then. How have you been during those five years? Uh, it, it's been tough, to be honest with you. It's been tough. It's, uh, you know, this pandemic has really put a... a a damper on a lot of things that you want to accomplish in life. And, uh, you know, you had to adjust and, and make you adapt to the situation and, and make the best of it. So, but I'm just real glad and blessed to be back here in Korea coaching the Anyang Hala hockey team. Right. It's been a very difficult time for a lot of sports, but uh, I imagine it must have been even more so for ice hockey in Korea as the local scene is so small. You need international opponents to compete, right? Absolutely. And, you know, all the hard work, uh, all the people put in that put in before the Olympics to the Olympics, you know, it's, it be, it's kind of stopped and kind of forgotten in a sense, uh, which is a real shame because uh, we did a lot of great things and memorable things during that process. Right. Despite the difficult time, however, you were offered to take the reins of Anyang Hala. Uh, last year in 2021 in May, uh, whilst keeping your role as head coach of the national team at the time. How were you approached about taking on Anyang? Was it an easy or difficult decision? Oh, it was an easy decision. You know, you, you want to be a part of this organization. It's a winning organization. Um, they Their their brand is, is number one and be the best. Um, and I want to be a part of that. So it was an easy decision to be a, a part of this, uh, this great, uh, great team, great organization. Sure, a great team. But uh, how has Anyang Hala uh, been coping during the pandemic? You, you know, we, we survived and that, that shows the resilience of, of our chairman and their, his commitment to ice hockey in Korea um, to for us to still be standing and uh, because of our chairman we're, we're here we're ready to go and we're excited to be, uh, be playing again as i mentioned you took on anyang hala whilst being uh, the national team head coach until earlier this year as well you stepped down after eight years in that role i believe was it difficult to leave behind absolutely you know that that was something that uh uh, I started and it's kind of like your baby and uh, you trust your players. You really care about your players and to, to step down for, you know, different reasons or personal reasons um, to step away from it. But I, I wasn't that far. You know, I, I always kept an eye on the guys. I kept an eye on the team, um, tried to help as much as I could in the uh, areas that I could. And but uh you know, it was a very difficult time. It was a tough, really tough decision. But, uh, you know, again, um, different priorities. Family was uh, very important to me. Uh, when you say family was important to you, was it the traveling? Uh, what, what was it that made it difficult? Well, you, you know, uh, my family came here um, to live with me and, and uh, uh, we were making a transition back to the U.S., uh, we adopted a little boy. So there's a lot of things going on in our family. Uh, kids, our older kids are going to college. Uh, so again, um, you know, the, the different uh, uh, transformations or the transitions that were happening in our my family uh, were very important to me. And I think they needed me more there um, than uh, uh, being here uh, coaching the national team, which was very time consuming. 
Sure, uh, although Korean fans will have been disappointed to see you step down as the national team coach. I'm sure they'll be glad that you stayed in Korea at least uh, to lead Anyang Hala. Let's talk about the Asia League ice hockey now. It's scheduled to kick off again on September 3rd after coming to a halt for two years and seven months due to the pandemic. Uh, how do you feel about the resumption of the uh, Asia League? You must be excited. Oh, ecstatic. Uh, it's fantastic that we're starting up again. And uh, uh, people don't know the importance of this league for Asian countries, for Japan and Korea. It, this competition, this league is very important for our development uh, and growth of our, our ice hockey. And uh, to start up again, it's exciting. How's the, the team preparing? It's been a while. <laughs> It has been a while. Uh, it's been, uh, I, I guess my expectations uh, have been uh, very high because of my anxiety to do very well, the pressures to do very well. And, and um, not, you know, I have to show some empathy, I guess, for not playing for three years and uh, um, getting new members on this team, old players retiring. Um, so it's a different dynamic, different team. Uh, and so, but my expectations are always high and, and, um, and I want my players to meet that expectation. And, uh, sometimes it's frustrating at times, but, uh, you know, our players here, they work extremely hard, um, to try to, to meet those expectations. Right. So the team, they are uh, visibly rusty then, uh, after the of COVID break, should we say? It, yes. It, you know, we, we haven't played game in three years, Com you know, international competition. And, uh, you know, if you, you know, I'm sure the players remember their process in playing international games and other teams from around the world um, and not playing that for three years. I'm, I'm expecting that they want to be at that same level, uh, but you need that competition. You need to play games to develop. You need to, to fail to get better. And, uh, you know, by not playing games, you're not failing. You know, you're just practicing, which is, which is tough to do every day in and out. And uh, but I, again, you know, I'm very proud of my players and how they've been responding. To uh, you know, I'm forcing them to to have practice twice a day, so I'm making it hard for them because it's not easy. Mm. As we move on towards the season, it's going to be hard, and it's going to be harder. So we have to adapt. Uh, you know, the, what did Clint Eastwood say? Improvise, it, uh, overcome, and adapt. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, so I, I really uh, uh, like that saying because that's what we have to do. Yes, it will be interesting to see how uh, Anyang Hala uh, do uh, back on the continental stage. And hopefully it will give a boost back to the sport in Korea. Uh, you talked about how difficult has been for the sport during the pandemic. Where would you say Korean ice hockey is at the moment? Uh, even before the pandemic, Korea was perhaps, should we say, an underdog. Uh, but the pandemic must have taken more of a toll. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, we've always been the underdog. But, uh, you know, we gained so much respect uh, during that process a few years back to get in the position of the, you know, top division, uh, top 16 teams. Uh, we were there and uh you know then all of a sudden this hits and uh and because of a lot of reasons not just one um you know it, it slowly declined back a little bit but hopefully we can generate enough momentum to get back to where we were uh, because once you taste it you want to get back mm. and i know our players do too how do you think we can rebuild and take the game forward again in korea now where do you want me to start? <laughs> There's so many things that, uh, you know, I talked about building our new arenas. We, we, we're slowly trying to build more arenas for these kids, uh, for the demand for the ice time, because we do have a lot of young kids that are hungry to play hockey. Um, change the mentality of our, of our education system in the schools with the elite program and the education program. Change that a little bit so we don't lose 80% of our middle school hockey players so they can, can continue to play hockey. And, and um, you know, our, our Army team, get that back in order because if you miss hockey at that age, at a professional level for two years, 
you're really behind the eight ball and it's tough to climb back out of that. And, uh, um, you know, we need that back. Uh, and, but, you know, the interest with a lot of kids are, are there, they're hungry to play. Uh, we had a player from uh, Anyang last year play in North America in the East Coast Hockey League, and uh, he did very well. He was a fan favorite there in Atlanta. Um, so that shows you there, there's, a, there's a goal for these young kids. If they want to play in the NHL or they want to play outside of Korea, there's opportunities to do that. And uh, hopefully we can give them that opportunity to, to be able to to attain their their dreams so from what you've seen the potential and the talent is uh, out there in Korea absolutely you know if, if people only knew if scouts only knew what kind of hockey players here and uh, that we have um, and then cultivate them and, and make them uh, grow in a great environment um, we'll, we'll have lots of success I think we'll have players like we have Korean players playing in the major leagues. We'll have players playing in the NHL. It's just a matter of cultivating that talent um, in a great environment. Uh, what's the kind of raw talents that Korean uh, players have that you've seen that uh, you would appeal to uh, perhaps scouts overseas? You know, we have a lot of skill because a lot of skill is developed here. We, uh, we have a lot of that individual skill schools or teaching, tutoring, Hagwan style, uh, but if we can translate that skill into that team sport and not teach a team sport as an individual, I, I think we'll have more success in that. I, I think that's important. Uh, but, uh, you know, in our Korean DNA, it's that never give up mentality. The passion we have for something and we go 100% and, and that's in our DNA, um, which you can't change. It seems that even now you are uh, very much interested in trying to continue to contribute to the development of the uh, ice hockey game here in South Korea, even as your role as the head coach of Anyahala. Absolutely. I, I think it's very important um, that we do develop these younger kids uh, because, you know, they're the future of Anyanghala. And if we can't develop those kids, we, we have no one coming in from behind to replace the, the Olympic athletes that we have on that are uh, on the verge of retiring in a few years. You know, they, they've been playing hockey for a long time. And it's uh, as much as they love the sport, the, the age catches up with you as it does with everything. So but we need those young kids and hopefully we can be a witness to them and, and see uh how how hard we work here in Anyang and mm. what a great sport it really is i think is very important uh to to be a good person um is very important to do the right thing and if you can if, if they can witness that from our players um I, I think you know that's being a great hockey player is secondary that'll all come together I think on that note, uh, we can leave it there. Uh, Coach Peck, it's been an absolute pleasure and honour to have you back on the show, and we hope to speak to you again soon. Absolutely. I appreciate this. Uh, it's been great talking to you, and uh, I love talking hockey, so anytime you want to call, I, I really enjoy it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you once again.